In this video, I will be going over all the stuff that I thrifted on my trip on the way to the camp listing party, and I will show you a little bit of the cool scenery along the route. When you find treasure at the flea market, I, I'm a resell it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shagan and I'm a full-time reseller. I mainly sell electronics and collectibles for a profit on eBay. Oh, how'd you get this? eBay, dude. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thank you, come again. A couple weeks ago, I drove from Vegas, a hot place, to Phoenix, an even hotter place to attend the camp listing party. If you don't know what that is, it's, I made a whole separate video, link is in the description. There are two main routes from Vegas to Phoenix. One is about four hours and 45 minutes, the other one's about five hours and 15 minutes. I went the longer way because I wanted to see uh, the route with more thrift stores. It was about an hour and a half to get to the first town called Bullhead City. My original plan was to stream live from the thrift store and I was pretty excited about that because I normally stream only from the flea market. This was gonna be a little bit different, but my GoPro decided that was not going to be the case. Uh, not gonna be the plan anymore, but I was still excited. So I walked into that thrift store with a lot of confidence and I ended up walking out of that thrift store empty handed. It's okay. I got some breakfast, I drove to the next town, it was about an hour and 20 minutes to get there. But before I tell you what happened at the next thrift store, let's all do something together please. If you haven't already, on the count of three, let's all hit the like button together for better luck. All right, one, two. The next town I was in is called Desert Hills and I don't have footage of this pickup so please don't hate me. This is what I picked up, it's a, a Sony camcorder and the model is dcr trv 27 and it's in pretty good physical condition uh, no marks or anything uh, no major damage and the strap um, and the handle are in pretty good condition a lot of times this has a lot of wear or it's just missing and it's incomplete it has the battery um, so i paid 15 dollars for this and i know what a lot of you guys are thinking like this is crazy to pay 15 dollars for something that I don't know if it's gonna work for sure, but I think it would be crazy not to buy this because for parts, it's selling for about 30 to $40 plus shipping, and if it's in working condition, I can get about $90. So, worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, I'll still double my money, um, and I'll show you guys after I show you the rest of the haul how I'm going to test this. The third thrift store I went to was in the same town, and it was about 10 minutes away. I have not seen a thrift store packed like this in a long time. It kind of reminds me of how thrift stores were back after they opened after that first lockdown in 2020. And a follower of mine on Instagram, she told me that she went to some of these thrift stores too a few days after. And one of the cashiers told her that, I guess apparently that people empty out trailers from wealthy neighborhood estates when they pass. So I'll show you what I got. Is this Chrysler CD radio? And if you ever see CD radios original that go to, you know, Hondas, Fords, Toyota, this goes to Chrysler, these could be worth a little bit of money. I paid $12.50 for this. It does not have the harness, but it is super clean. It's in really, really good physical condition. So what I will do is sell this as untested, but have returns open. And I want to try to maximize how much money I'm going to get for this. So I will list this. Uh, comparable to what's already listed, so like 175, 200 plus shipping, and they just have uh, returns open for this. This should work, um, super clean. Next thing I have is these uh, Brita water filters, and I pay two dollars and fifty cents for these. It's a it's a three pack, and these are all sealed. I'll show you, I'll show you. Yeah, these are all sealed, so of course um, I'll sell these as new open box. And these are selling for about $20 to $25. And these have a really strong sell-through rate from what I remember. I'll, of course, I'll show you guys. Um, yeah, water filters sell, sell well. So pick these up if you, if you see these out in the wild. The next thing I got is this Yamaha. It's a, a Yamaha wind tone generator, WT11. And I paid $17.50 for this. So I did pay up for this. I think this is the most expensive thing that I bought. Um, this was selling complete and tested for like 350 to 450. Of course, I'm not going to be able to get that because I don't have all the parts to it. But it has, uh, it takes a standard 15 volt. Where is it? Oh yeah, 15 volt. So I have these in the basement, so I'll be able to power test these 
and uh, I'll play with the buttons to make sure that that works. And I saw one listed right now. I think they're asking about 140 plus shipping. And I'll list mine a little bit higher than that because mine is in better physical condition than theirs. And I'm okay with their selling first and then the, the next person coming along buying mine because they don't want to pay the 350 or the 450 because they don't need a complete unit. They just need just this base. So I'll, I'll price mine for about 175 plus shipping um, as long as it's power tested and working. Um, so uh, Yamaha, if you ever see Yamaha, Yamaha products normally always, always have some value. Next up, I bought this match and patch gel coat repair kit and it's sealed. When I first saw this, I thought that maybe it was resealed and maybe it might be incomplete, but it's just old. It's from 1990. And when I picked this up, it had a few different price tags on it. One said two or three dollars and then the other one had seventeen dollars. So I did talk to them and they talked to the manager and they ended up coming down to twelve dollars and forty nine cents. And of course, I was trying to get a little bit better price. So they went back to the manager, talked to him again and they came back. Uh, it was twelve dollars and fifty cents. I suppose there's always a little uh, wiggle room. Wiggle us on down to 400. So I should be able to get uh, about $50 for this. I did pay a little bit for this. It was $12.49, but the nice thing about this is there's no cleaning required, no testing, and um, it's pretty light. So shipping for this won't be too bad. The next thing I got is this ESPN 360 mouse, and it has the receiver and the manual. So I think this is new. So I'll probably sell this as new open box. I'll take a closer look at it. And when I first saw this, the ESPN3 and then uh, 360, I thought maybe it was a collaboration between Xbox 360 and ESPN3. It's not, it's just they changed the name from 360 and they just dropped the, the 60 and now it's called ESPN3. I couldn't really find any comps on this, so maybe 20 to $25 unless I find something something good. So I paid uh, $3.50 for this. The very last thing I got is this game ball mouse. Actually, I didn't get this on the way to the camp. I got this at the camp. Some of us went thrifting. This is the only thing that I bought actually when we went thrifting. So I paid $5.50 for this. That was actually the original tag, but it was 60% off uh, the tag, the blue tag. So it came out to like $2.30 or something. So it is missing the original ball. So I will order uh, just a Chinese knockoff. Um, it's about $10 to order that one. 10 bucks, take it, leave it. I saw the listing. I think they sold one for about 70 or $80. Um, that one had the manual. I don't have the manual for this one. So I'll list mine a little bit below that. I'm pretty sure that this will work. It's pretty clean. I did promise you guys, I will show you about testing this Sony camcorder. The very main thing you need is just this power supply. All right, this Sony power supply, look for the model ACL10B. This can vary a little bit. The main thing you wanna look for is to make sure that the head, the adapter is flat. This is the most universal one that will work with a lot of Sony camcorders from the early 2000s. Just make sure there's no damage to the wire. Don't worry if the two prong Part is missing, this is pretty universal. You probably have this around your house somewhere that you can use, so don't worry about that. And you just plug it in. Um, the adapter here is on the bottom. And um, you also want to test and make sure that the battery holds a charge. That's one thing that you don't want the customer to have a surprise. Uh, a lot of times too, when you grab this camera, there's probably already uh, a tape inside. You can reuse that same tape when you're testing this. So um, these are the tips that I have for the Sony camcorder. Altogether, I spent $66.25 and I'm looking at a total estimated market value of about $680. Have you ever done thrifting when on a road trip or vacation? I'm curious, let me know in the comments below, drop a comment. Uh, this was pretty fun doing this and thanks for watching this all the way to the end. I really appreciate you. If you learned something new or if you enjoyed watching this, please give this a like. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.